welcome to Forthright. I'm Sulani Madsen, and today I have a story on looking at the balance of power between a strong mayor in the city of Spokane and a strengthening council. This story was brought to my attention by concerned citizen Neil Miller, and he was observing that while the voters approved a strong mayor, the legislative council branch has been gradually expanding its scope of responsibility relative to the executive, the mayoral branch, um, without any voter input on that change in governance. And he says, don't be surprised if you see a new initiative on city governments next, governance next year. It's 20 years since voters approved a strong mayor form of government, and they replaced the city manager form. It was, of course, controversial at the time, and there were some comments both for and against in 1996. A strong mayor can appoint department heads and veto legislation, has the power to move the city forward, whereas a councilwoman at the time, Roberta Green, said this is too drastic a change from what we now have. Instead of an evolution, this is a big leap. But now we're having an evolution, and it's really kind of under the radar for most people because it's occurring at the level of council resolutions. Right now, how it's supposed to work is the, the voters elect a mayor. Um, the, the mayor hires a city administrator, not a city manager, but a city administrator who is directly responsible to the mayor. Um, because voters have directly elected the mayor, there's a, at least a four-year accountability cycle for that city manager. And of course, every mayor would have a, an incentive to hire the best city manager they can find or the best city administrator they can find. Uh, because presumably they, they both wish for the best for the city, but they also would wish to be reelected. Um, in a council manager form of government, the council hires a city manager, and that manager reports to the city council. The accountability loop is a little more muddy because voters have to go through seven council members to really make that a referendum, uh, anything a referendum on the city manager. Plus, the city manager then has to report to seven bosses instead of a city administrator who reports to a a single boss. The city car charter sets out the responsibilities of each branch, and the, the, that change in the balance of responsibilities between the executive and the legislative branch, between the mayor's office and the city council, um, has meant that city council staff has been growing rapidly over the last 20 years. They have more responsibility, that justifies more staff. Uh, they have more staff to supervise, they have more responsibilities, and when the Salary Review Commission looks at the position of city council, they determine that it is, it is becoming closer and closer to a full-time job, and so those salaries raised. Uh, one of the comments in 1996 was from someone who said they saw dollar signs all over the place of this change, and they're right, there have been a lot of dollar signs. The plan has been expen expensive. I don't know that going back would be any less expensive. Um, but this is not a change that's, ha that's happening because the public demanded a change to drop the strong mayor form of government and go to a city council manager form of government. It's, it's happening because the city council has been making these changes to the city charter. And the way the change happens is that uh, a new policy comes up and in the city charter where it says city administrator is responsible for the, for the uh, implementation and for the follow-up and for the monitoring, City administrator is crossed out and changed to read city council. Very minor kind of a change, but people like uh, Miller and others who are looking at it have noticed this trend and it's been accelerating. It's something that the legislation is written by Brian McClatchy for the council and there's been advice given to the council that this is a perfectly legitimate way to make this change. Um, but again, it's not coming back up to the voters like the original vote for a change in governments to a strong mayor did. You know, we had a city manager, a strong, maybe you could call it a strong city manager with a weak council form of government or a weaker council form of government for, for many years in, in the 60s. Our second city manager was Sylvan Fulweiler. He uh, died not that long ago at the age of 95. He served for over a decade as city manager. Oddly enough, I knew him as a child because his, his house was just down the street from us in a fairly ordinary uh, post-war Spokane suburb kind of development. And uh, his, his front yard had home base for when we played kickball. And what we liked about Sylvan Fulweiler was not that he was the city manager, but because he didn't complain that he had a bunch of kids hanging out on his front yard uh, waiting their turn to play kickball. Um, I remember him as just as a very congenial kind of guy, the very ordinary guy, understood his city very well. 
He served until the mid-70s when the city council started to become more activist and he realized there was going to be a change in, in how the, the governance was working, less trust placed in their hired manager, uh, council taking more responsibility. And uh, he moved on to a, to a job with the uh, Department of General Administration, later retired in Spokane. And the city council has been taking on more and more responsibility really ever since the 70s. Um, that culminated that in a shift to the strong mayor in the late 90s, and now we're having another conversation about do we shift back? There's, there's always this look for nostalgia. We look back at what, what was, and can we, can we have those, those halcyon days when Mayor David Rogers and City Manager Sylvan Fulweiler just kind of manage things nicely in a, in a Spokane nice way, and, and things seem to be running very smoothly. We're not going back there, uh, but we shouldn't be making a change in governance without having a good and robust conversation about it. And then that's where this conversation came up in the background on, uh, for folks who are th looking at having another initiative come up on Spokane governance. So we wanted to update you on that so that it doesn't come as a surprise. There's another problem in this that's happening in this governance thing, and that has to do with, with committees. When the mayor appoints an executive committee, a, a committee of, of citizens for citizen input, those committees meet as part of public meetings laws. Uh, the, the minutes are kept, there's a, there's a record, uh, anybody can ask for those records. Uh, there's, there's, much, there's more transparency required. When the council appoints an ad hoc committee, those committees are not meeting under open meetings laws. Now, they can be a really good forum for, for uh, citizens to get together and discuss, but they are not the same thing, and they do not have the same level of transparency. Also, while the mayor is appointing people to committees and the intention is to represent many points of view within the committee. Uh, sometimes those ad hoc committees the council has appointed have been recruited or self-selected, and that's been the complaint about the Sustainability Action Subcommittee. And that group, the SAS, is the group that came up with the Spokane Sustainability Action Plan. Now, the plan as a statement of, of goals is one thing, uh, but now it's coming up to the, to the city. The resolution has just been been issued, dated September 27th. We'll grab a copy of that. And that resolution would adopt the Sustainability Action Plan. It has been modified some. The requirement, the, some of the requirements related to natural gas have changed. But that plan is up for adoption. There, there's a whole series of whereases, and a now therefore be it resolved that the Spokane City Council adopts the attached 2021 Sustainability Action Plan and formally commits to ensuring the plan is implemented and monitored with progress updates provided regularly. And be it also resolved that the City Council commits to reconstituting the Sustainability Action Subcommittee and will select its initial membership as an ad hoc subcommittee of the City Council's of another committee to guide and assist in implementing and financing the plan and monitor progress towards the city's sustainability goals. Okay, those are not those are not a legislative function, those are really an executive function, and nowhere in this resolution does it mention a role for the city administrator, uh, much less for the, for the mayor's office uh, and for the mayor. And so if in a strong mayor form of government, one would think that uh, implementing changes of this magnitude would certainly at least reference working with the mayor, if not uh, actually delegating the implementation of this policy to the executive and to the mayor. And that's not part of it. And that's another concern of those who are looking at this governance is that the, the council is really operating in a way that's, that's outside what the intent of that, that, uh, that strong mayor vote was. It didn't pass by a huge landslide, but it did pass. Uh, we do go with the uh, results of elections. Elections have consequences. And one of them is that Spokane selected a strong mayor form of government. At this point, we're just bringing it to the attention of Spokane citizens. Follow along at the council meeting, see what's going on, ask questions of your council representatives uh, to see what they think of, of these, of these uh, committees, uh, what their intentions are, uh, how they see the mayor's office fitting into this implementation of this, the sustainability action plan. You know, I want to I wanna close this with a couple of, uh, of notes. One is, you know, former council member Ben Stuckert, former council president Ben Stuckert, uh, ran for mayor. Presumably he thought strong mayor was a good idea when he ran, and, it, and this isn't a case of sour grapes because he lost. 
Um, no, but he, he really felt that um, in his piece that he wrote for the Inlander, he said, the, politi the political jockeying inherent in divided government is great theater, but hell on the non-political professionals who work for the mayor. But you know, why would, why would the non-political professionals working for the city council be under any less theater? There's certainly been enough theater. There's enough theater going around in politics for everybody. Uh, and I can't see where having seven bosses to report to would be a, an improvement over having one boss for that administrator or manager to report to. Um, one of the comments is that in the 19, he says that in the 1990s, before we experimented with the strong mayor system, the city's combined city manager and city council budget was about 500,000. Today, the mayor and city council's budgets together cost taxpayers more than 3 million. That's a good place to start asking questions. To what extent are staffs duplicated? Uh, are there places where there really should just be one set of technical staff to refer to uh, for information rather than the council and the mayor each having their building up their own staffs for information and advice? At the time the strong mayor uh, form of government was adopted, there was one comment that was published from a Cincinnati city manager. So this is someone who's been in that city manager position similar to a city administrator, only re a city manager reports to the council instead of the mayor. And what he said, this is a man named John Shire, he said that um, many times I've seen this issue come up. People are dissatisfied with the people in government, and they try to fix a people problem by making a change in the system. Keep in mind, good people can make a poor system work, and the opposite is true as well. In other words, it's not really about the system, it's about the people and the people operating the system. The strong mayor system has originally passed. It works, it can work. Uh, a council manager, all of those systems can work, but the people have to be willing to make them work. And right now we have a system that is slipping into a hybrid and it's got a good question for Spokane citizens is what do you expect your governance system to look like? What do you expect the council to be doing Legislatively, legislatively, in terms of setting priorities and policies, what do you expect the mayor's office to be doing in terms of implementing policies and priorities? And how much duplication do you want? How much transparency do you want? And who should be involved? And how should those decisions be made? Um, council meetings are available every Monday. Get involved.